Okay, back to the live coding. We've defined all the ring operations for um, polynomials. And now we move on to define also computing of derivative and integral. And a nice example of using the integral to define the exponential function. Okay, specification of derivative. So we want to have a syntactic definition of derivative, where syntax here is list of coefficients. And this is a specification. So for, each, for all lists of coefficients, if we evaluate the result of computing the derivative syntactically, we should get the derivative of the result of evaluating the, uh, the coefficient list as a function. So computing a function and then taking a mathematical derivative, which we cannot do in Haskell, is replaced by computing a syntactic derivative and computing the evaluation of that, which we can do in Haskell. Okay, so perhaps an example first. Um, so we have xp here, uh, we can define uh, an example p1, which for any ring a is a poly of a, and it's, uh, let's say, xp minus 1 squared. Okay, so what is p1? It's 1 minus 2, 1. Okay, so that means if we sort of by hand compute this, so if we have the polynomial 1 minus 2, 1, we expect, uh, we expect the der p of this to be equal to, well, let's write, um, well, we're out, in, out of code, so we can just write it without comment signs here. Uh, the evaluation of this, um, the evaluation of the polynomial would be the function x2, 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So we expect the evaluation of the derivative to be lambda x2, and then the constant term disappears, minus 2x becomes minus 2, and plus x squared becomes plus 2 times s x squared. So we would expect to get the list p minus 2, 2 out. So then we at least have a test case we can apply uh, afterwards. So let's see if we can first give it a type of their p. So it should take a polynomial to a polynomial, but it would also use multiplication for these exponents. So let's require this to be a ring. So as usual, um, the first part of it is just boilerplate. So if we get a P of coefficients, then we will return a P of der L of those coefficients. And that means that we have a der L with a very similar type signature, but where we work on normal Haskell lists. So der L should do the actual work, and it has two possible cases. The empty list, which, well, the derivative of a zero is zero. So that's clear. If it's not the empty list, then it has a first component, which we actually don't care about because that's a constant term. And then they have the rest of the coefficients. And if you remember what derivative is supposed to do, it should multiply each coefficient by the exponent at that position and then move it down one level. So move it down, that's sort of by ignoring the first element, just losing the tail, that's already moving it down. So here we can just use the prelude function zip with uh, of our coefficient list with, well, we need something which is basically one, two, three, but it needs to be an abstract ring expression. So let's just give a definition. So this we comment out and say it's, it's something called from one. So what is from one here? Well, it has to be for any ring, it should be a list of A. And from one, we can write it using the prelude function iterate of one plus uh, starting at one. Um, 
Okay, let's see here. There's some type mismatch. So uh, we couldn't match the expected type of function zip width. Yes, okay, sorry. So I was a little quick. I said zip width, but zip width what? Zip width expects a two argument operator as the first. So we should simply multiplication as from one. Okay, so now this seems to work, but let's try it out. So first of all, uh, from one, if we try that, that one out, we can say, let's take the five first arguments of from one. Okay, and take is not in scope, it's a prelude.take. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sufficiently uh, used to having take around that I will actually add that to my import list, take, and also the type int that it uses. Um, so take five from one, so that's the list. So, so from one, as I said, is an infinite list, but take five or something like that is, is the finite prefix. Okay, so there L here, using the prelude zip width function with multiplication, taking the list of coefficients as long as it may be and combining it with the numbers one, two, three, four, and so on. If AS is an infinite list, it will also work. So then uh, there L here would compute an infinite list of coefficients. Okay, so now we should try if this actually works. So we should try to compute the derivative of P1. So what is there P of P1? Okay, minus two, two. That's exactly what we had computed beforehand and expected here as a result. So that's nice. And we can also, we can compute the derivative at several levels. So if we compute the derivative again, it's just a coefficient in front of the X term, which is that two. Okay, nice. Um, now I want to do the opposite of derivative. I want to do the integral. So the specification here is basically the inverse of derivative. So saying that whatever integral returns, when we compute the derivative of it, we should take back the coefficient list that was the second argument to integ p. And why the second argument? Well, I'm using the first argument to supply the information that their p thrown away. So notice that their p, which is defined in terms of their l, throws away the first argument, the first element of the list of coefficients, the coefficient for the zeroth order term, the constant. So in integ p, I sort of splice that back in. So okay, first typing then. So integ p, it's, uh, let's assume we need the same operations here. It takes an a and a poly a and returns a poly a. And as usual, the first level of it, it takes this constant, let's call it a, and then it takes a poly a s and returns poly of integ l of a and a s. And integ l will have a very similar definition, but using lists of coefficients directly. I know this might be a bit tiresome to watch that I'm doing these two level definitions all the way, but it's also good practice to try to keep parts, type parts, which mean could mean something more general. Because lists, of course, used for lots of things in addition to lists of coefficients. And in the next week, we will use it for something else. So to avoid clashes, I'm using the new type here. So integral, so if you have a constant term, we call it A there, let's still call it A and then a list of the rest of the coefficients, well, the first, the constant term, should just be returned as the first element of the list. And then it's a question what to do with, zip, with the AS. So in the previous case, I did zip with, um, now I don't know quite what happened, zip with, um, sorry, I did zip with multiplication, and not surprisingly, we have to do sort of the opposite here. So that's zip with division. And now division suddenly means that we have to introduce not just a ring, but a field. That means that this also has to be a field. And let's um, fill in the other arguments first and then try to fix the imports. So what should we zip? Well, the list of coefficients with the from one. So this may not be completely correct, but let's first fix the import so that we can try it. So this now says that type constructor class field is not in scope. 
So field is one more of these things that is defined in this algebra module. module. So let's import it. Okay, and then it says poly, not in scope. Oh, sorry, I, I called it poly here instead of P. The data type was called poly, but the constructor was called just P. Okay, and then finally, the definition of the division operator also needs to be imported. Division. Great, okay, now I defined there L, there P, integ L and integ P. Let's try to use them for something. First, I should uh, use them for the example I already prepared. So we had uh, derivative of P1 and P1 itself was this. So if I want to get back to the original form, I can say integ P uh, of derivative of P1. Well, remembering I have to supply a constant, let's put back the one. So now we get one is one minus two is minus two and one is one. You see that it has changed the type. So remember P1 is a generic for any ring and the defaults in Haskell is to use integer if possible. So that uses integer. But when I called integ P, it used this division and integers don't support division. So that's why it's sort of had to use doubles in this case. Okay, um, so no, now we defined derivatives and integrals of uh, polynomials. And actually we would like to move to power series and the interesting thing here, let's maybe make a separate little code block. Begin code, end code. So I can just say power series is a polynomial or the, the data type here is the same as, as the polynomials. And then I can define the, using the fact that Haskell has infinite lists, uh, support for infinite lists. So a power series is just an infinite polynomial. And let's try to build an infinite polynomial. And I think the, the one of the easiest way to build a polynomial here is to use integ and recursion. So if you remember the exponential function, we have this function exponential um, that has the interesting property is that if you compute its derivative, you get the same function back. Sorry, <laughs> you get exponential function back. So if we want to implement the exponential function as a power series, we can use this equation in the opposite direction because this also means if the derivative of x is x, then the integral of x is also x. But we only need to know at what starting point. So we need to know what is x at zero. Well, you know the exponential functions e to the power of zero or a to the power of zero is actually always one. And uh, well, if we should be sort of uh, abstract here, it should say the x of zero is one. Okay, so with these two facts, that x is the derivative and that also means the integral, we should be able to implement the x polynomial. Okay, first type wise, it should be a poly a, but it is a poly a for not any kind of a, it has to supply a support to in computing integrals. So we actually have to require field a here. So for any field a, we should be able to define xp. So we want to define xp recursively. So we, xp is the function which is the integral starting at one of xp. Okay, now I was too eager to write one here. It should be the, poly the polymorphic one. Okay, so now I defined xp. Uh, if I want to evaluate it, or if I want to look at it, I probably need to uh, look at a finite prefix because infinite lists are a bit annoying. So I will implement a helper function here called take p and take first, that's a prelude function. Let's put it outside here. Take is a prelude function going from int to list a to list a. And I just want to make a helper function here called take p, which goes from an int to a power series of a to a poly of a. So notice I use the type types in an MPS because we can supply a power series as an argument to take p, but the result would always be a finite prefix, which means a polynomial. 
So even though it's a type synonym, so the Haskell doesn't keep them apart, it may help the reader. Okay, so take P of N and the P AS is just P of take N AS. Okay, great. Now we can see what is take P, take P of five of X P. Okay, this is maybe not completely readable. So let's see if I got rational numbers in place. So this, I want the power uh, a poly of rational. Okay, rational is uh, not in scope. So let's import it. Rational. Okay, now this may not be perfectly readable. So let's take it over here and, and analyze it a little bit. So what is it saying is that the first coefficient, second coefficient are both one, and then it's a half, and then it's one over six, and then it's one over 24. So this is the Haskell notation for, uh, for uh, ratios. So a whole, a whole, one over two, one over six, one over 24. And we can notice here that six equals three times two times one, two, equals two times one. Perhaps I should indent a bit to show the pattern. And 24 equals four times, four times three times two times one. So basically the ith component here is one divided by um, i and then the uh, factorial. Well, the factorial, I, don't, I can't write it like that in Haskell, so maybe I should say factorial i. That would be the general term. And just to check, we, we could say, take the six first terms, next 120, which is five times 24. So that seems to work out. Okay, now I claim that this is coding up the exponential function, but how can we check it? Well, we have the evaluator. So we could call uh, our eval function. I think I've got it in place, yes. I, we could call it on the polynomial, or on, the, on the power series, but that would not terminate because it has an infinite sum. So we can call it after take n. So let's call our little uh, eval approximate, approximate as eval a. Uh, so it takes an n and p, and then it calls eval after take p n of this p. So basically, eval is the composition of eval a is the composition of eval and take n. Let's give it a type as well. So it takes an integer to a function from a to a, where this is a ring. No, actually. Um, well, okay. Let's see, variable not in scope, composition. Oh, I impl imported very little from the prelude. Let's import function composition as well. Okay, now the types are not quite right. Um, what did I do wrong? So eval. So take P. So the type I've given is wrong here. So it case, uh, and it should also have the poly a, and then it should return this function from a to a. Okay, good. So our approximate evaluation function with say five terms of our exponential polynomial, um, if we evaluate that, well, it's, it's something where it's a function from A to A, so we have to evaluate at the point. Let's take the point one. So this should be then an approximation of E to the power of one, which is E. So if we use, uh, let's actually, imp well, let, let's be explicit and say, my, uh, compare it to evaluate the prelude dot exp at one. Oh, so they're, they're rather close. Uh, let's actually form the, the difference prelude dot x of one. 
So now it's uh, basically one unit and the second decimal place is wrong. So it's 2.71 instead of 2.72. But let's let's uh, add a few terms in the in the simplification. Okay, now it's down at uh, the sixth, seventh digit somewhere, and we can add a few more terms. Well, now it's down to the precision of Haskell. So by using 20 terms in this expansion uh, of this sort of homemade implementation of power series and the integral, we actually can compute a function like the exponential to as many digits as the double data type supports. Okay, so that was all for this lecture and we will move on next week with more work on derivatives and power series.